Hi, welcome. Thanks for watching and I appreciate you being here. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and I am wishing you a happy new year in 2023. This is not the first video that I'm making this year, but I tend to say happy new year all of January, even in my personal life. The first video that I made was to set the goals for 2023. This is something that I started doing last year when I first got on YouTube. And part of me really believes that having a good plan is foundational to success. I am a big planner and that is reflected how every year, either at the end of December or early in January, I do make a plan and I make a budget for the entire year. Because this is a personal finance channel, a lot of the goals that I'm going to share are typically goals that are related to money in one way or another. A plan is important. That is why if you are trying to get a loan for a business, they will typically want to see your business plan because if you don't have a plan, they don't really know how you are going to execute. So I think you should be treating your life the same way. Look at it as if it was a business. I've always had plans. What I did differently when I started my channel was to start documenting my progress and really just diving into and sharing with somebody else rather than just with my spouse, sharing how I was doing and what my progress was. This year is very similar. I have already posted the list for the first half of the year for this year's plan already. But this video isn't specifically about this coming year, but it is more of a look back. It is a recap an overall recap of how I performed last year. I am going to go over the different objectives, goals, and challenges that I set for myself, and I'm going to share with you how I did on them. Stick to the end because towards the end, I will also be throwing in some non-financial goals that I had that I can share with you, and I'll also let you know how I did on those as well. But first, here's a little bit about me. Hi, welcome to my channel, and I'm glad to have you here. Here's a little bit about my family or household consists of myself, my husband, and my toddler. My mom also lives with us, but she's not included in our finances. My husband and I both went to graduate school, but we no longer have student loan debt, fortunately. I work in banking and he works in aviation. I handle all of the family's finances and I love my role as the self-appointed CFO. I love talking about all things money, making money, saving money, investing money, and optimizing my portfolio and my finances in general. I look forward to taking you on a wealth building journey journey with us. I hope you enjoyed the videos and the channel as a whole, and I look forward to getting to know you. I am very open, so feel free to send me messages at any time or starting conversations in the comment section below. All right, for January, my goal was to set a budget and have a way that is really well documented for me to track all of my finances. Happy to report that I was very successful in that goal. I am a complete personal finance nerd. I have been tracking my finances in one way or another. I remember going to school and really just having that one bank account and having two minimum wage jobs and really keeping track of every penny because I didn't want to overdraft my account. I had a little checkbook. I was probably the only teenager who knew how to balance a checkbook because I was not okay with paying any fees. My view on that hasn't changed. The only difference is that I now have bigger balances to keep track of. Also, I have evolved from tracking it in a little register that I got for free from the bank to tracking it in Excel spreadsheets and using online banking. The next challenge that I had for myself in February was to do a no spend challenge. Typically, I like to set no spend challenges for February because February is the shortest month of the year. At the same time, it is also me in a way setting myself up for failure because in addition to Valentine's Day, there are a couple of birthdays in February in our family. And if you know anything about a no spend challenge, you really shouldn't be spending on anything that is not in the Necessity. Even though I cheat a little bit, I still always somehow manage to fail that challenge. I will cheat by doing things like buying the gifts either in January or in December, but that loophole is not sufficient because I end up either going out to dinner, getting a cake, or making extra food that sends the regular grocery bill higher than it normally would be. As expected, I did not meet that challenge in February. The third challenge was to review your credit and making sure that everything was on track. If you do not have good credit, it would be a great opportunity for you to try and make some improvements, either negotiate some of those payments if there was anything in collection, if there are any mistakes. 
I check my credit pretty regularly anyway. All of last year and the year before that, as well as 2020, as a result of the pandemic, there were a lot of opportunities for you to check your credit report much more frequently than you were before because instead of the one annual free credit report, they were allowing people to check them once a week. But there are other ways that you can check them. Every major financial institution these days is letting you check your credit for free, at least from one of the credit bureaus, and they are giving you a score. I have very good credit, so I don't need to repair my credit, but I certainly double check to make sure that there are no mistakes because mistakes can be made. In April, the challenge was to file taxes on time, to file them accurately because you never want the IRS on your back. But also, it is the deadline for maxing out your IRA for the prior calendar year. I almost always get my taxes done on time because tax planning is a year-round event, and as soon as January comes around I start gathering my paperwork and I start pulling it all together I have done my taxes myself for years now it doesn't mean that it's always going to be like that in the future as my situation gets more complicated if you are enjoying this video so far don't forget to hit the like button so the algorithm knows that it's good and of course subscribe for more content if you think any of the information that I provide here might be helpful to somebody else be sure to share it with them but for now, I have been doing my taxes myself for a very long time. I know exactly what I'm looking for every year and I start early. I start right when those W-2 start coming out, right when the 1099s start coming out. I am almost always ready to hit the ground running whenever the tax forms are ready. I was able to meet the tax challenge. The IRA challenge, I was able to meet that, but I'm not going to take too much credit for it because I truly make sure that I max out my IRA for both myself and my husband by 12:31, I tr try and max it out. That's not something I really had to worry about because for me, it was already done. And then for May, the challenge was to cook more. Cooking is something that I don't always have time for. Also, I like variety in my diet. I often want to eat some kind of foreign cuisine. I want to eat Indian food. I want to eat Thai food. I want to eat uh, sushi. I want to eat all these different things that I don't really know how to make. I end up eating out more than I really should be. In May, I wanted to cook more often. I don't know that I would say that I nailed this challenge. I think to a certain extent, I did do a lot of things to really put myself in a position where I ate out much less, but I didn't cut out the eating out as much as I could have or that I should have. I made a lot of one pot meals like chili. I made things that could last a couple of days like pulled pork sandwiches. At some point, it does get kind of exhausting even though I am not commuting as much as I was because I'm mostly working from home now. It's still very hard to find a lot of time to cook because the extra time that I'm saving in my day from not driving to and from a place of work, I'm using it to maybe wake up later in the morning I can sleep in a little bit or in the evening I'm spending more time with my son I'm not necessarily trying to focus on cooking as much I don't know I don't know that I necessarily nailed it I I'll confidently give myself a thumbs down for that one as for June the halfway point of the year that is the perfect time to take a look back and see how you did so far in the year if you're doing great fantastic continue doing what you're doing but if you're not doing so great you still have time to take a course of action that is different so you can start being better. A lot of these challenges are about personal finances and money management, which I love doing anyway, but they are also things that I've been doing for a long time. I look back on them, as you can see, I nailed most of the challenges out of the first five challenges. I only failed two of them. I felt like I was in a good place. So yes, I definitely did the mid-year challenge. I look back and I think I did okay. For July, that one is definitely something that I picked because it was specific to July. There is Prime in July. That is when Amazon Prime gives all of these special discounts to their Prime members where people can start getting really good deals. That's going to be your last big opportunity to get good deals before Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I know that some people are morally opposed to Amazon and that's fine even though I'm using the term Prime in July. That doesn't mean that you have to shop at Amazon. A lot of smaller retailers as well as other major retailers in an effort to compete with Amazon will also start offering some major discounts. Go to your favorite retailer, it doesn't have to be Amazon, 
But the idea is that you use that opportunity to start shopping early because one, there is back to school that is coming up in like two months and you have the holiday season that you're probably going to be shopping for people that you care about. And if you don't want to wait until the last minute, you can start slowly buying things rather than putting all of it on your credit card all at once or clearing your bank account. Start slowly buying things and take advantage of that opportunity. That's what I did. I made sure that I was able to get a couple of things. But remember that you fail the challenge if you buy something you don't need. I definitely forced myself to remove some of the things from the cart that I didn't need to make sure that I was successful. If you save money on something that you didn't really need to buy, did you really save money? It only counts if it was something that you needed. The eighth challenge was for August, which was to review and cancel any unused or unnecessary subscriptions. I did a review of my subscription. I decided not to cancel anything because I have very few subscriptions and the ones that we do have, we either share them with somebody or we get so much value out of them that it is worth the cost. The September challenge was to review or insurance needs and that is everything insurance related whether it's homeowners cars life insurance whatever the case might be i reviewed the insurance needs there were a lot of things that i didn't change but i did ultimately decide that we needed to make some changes regarding our life insurance policies that challenge even though it was a little bit late or better late than never i was still able to do it successfully the october challenge was to max all of your retirement accounts at that point i know it's very challenging because it's late in the year you are already nine months behind so if you really wanted to do well in that challenge you needed to either already be in a position to max out or you needed to tweak some final numbers for the last three months of the year in my case we already had everything set up so we are maxed out by 12 31. that challenge again a little bit of a give me because i already knew that i was going to be set up that way but since I'm hoping that people join me on this journey, I also set it up not just to 100% be tailored to me, but also to put it so that you too are able to participate. The November challenge was to do Thanksgiving on a budget. When it comes to Thanksgiving, we host quite often, which I am more than happy to do. And that's actually part of the problem because I am so happy to do it, I tend to be overzealous. Even though I tell myself that I want to be on a budget, I end up making extra sides, buying extra desserts, and doing extra things. And just like every other year, I overspent for Thanksgiving. That challenge was a fail, unfortunately, a matter of just getting overexcited and getting ahead of myself. And then for the final month of the year in December, the challenge was to do a net worth review, to rebalance, to check on your beneficiaries to make sure that they are what they're supposed to be, and finally to review your prior year spending in preparation for the new year's budget. That is a lot to do, but also it is the perfect time to do it because I don't know if it's the holiday spirit. I feel like work really tends to slow down at the time of year so you can have more time. Also, December is the perfect time to do a lot of these things simply because it's the end of the year. If you're going to be doing a budget for the new year, you're really going to want to know how you ended the previous year. Some people might be getting bonuses. Some people might be getting raises. There are a lot of things that happen in December that makes that an ideal time to do a lot of this stuff. So I did some rebalancing between US stocks and international stocks so I can stick with my regular asset allocation. I didn't really need to check my beneficiaries because no one died, no one got divorced, and no one was born. I last checked my beneficiaries when my son was born. That was the last time I updated the things that I needed to update and there has been no major life change. As far as the net worth review goes initially i said i would not do that i told myself that if i did a net worth review i would just be depressed however i decided not to be a hypocrite i didn't think it made sense that i only 
do a net worth review when my net worth is up. If it's flat or if it's down, I should still do it even if it's painful. Because that's part of the idea. When you're dealing with money, it's not always going to be roses. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit of poop. It's not always going to be fantastic. You just have to learn to ride the highs and the lows. With that in mind, I forced myself to do it. But one thing that I did say that I would do that I ended up not doing, I said that I would, at the end of the year, share my net worth with you guys. I know I didn't announce it, but that was something that I had set for myself, a goal that I kind of kept close to the vest, but I got cold feet. I got nervous and I decided not to do it. Hopefully next year, or I should say this year, this coming year, at the end of this year, I will have a little bit more courage and I will be willing to share that. But apparently I was not really willing to do that this year. And I don't really know why, because I don't show my face. I would still have some level of anonymity to a certain extent, but I decided that I wasn't comfortable with that yet. That is it for the financial goals that I set and that I shared on the channel. There were some non-financial goals that I also set for myself this year and I will tell you how I did on those. The first one was to drink less juice and I achieved that. So I cut out juice in, from my diet and I really only drink juice like two days a week. I have orange juice for breakfast on Saturdays and Sundays and that's it. I also wanted to drink more water. So some of the times when I used to have juice, say like a lemonade or something like that at dinner, I have replaced it with water. Definitely, I drink more water these days. I wanted to drink less soda. That is a big thumbs down. I'm not even going to drag it out. Didn't happen. I didn't start drinking more soda, so I guess that's a win. So I didn't replace the juice with soda, but I'm drinking the same amount of soda that I was before, which has not doesn't please me at all. The fourth non-financial goal was for me to take more time off. My work does not give me a hard time when I need to take vacation. I am very fortunate in that sense. The time is yours. You give proper notice. You can take your time. But I find that working from home full time has put me in a situation where my home life and my work life is so blurred. Fortunately, not in the bad way because some people feel like it means that they can never Ever shut down. In a way for me, it's blurred in a good sense. Going to work is not as much of a chore as it used to be because my commute has been cut down significantly. I live in a major metropolitan area. I constantly have to deal with traffic. I'm a lot less tired than I was before and it's wonderful. And because I'm not as tired, I find it very easy not to take time off because I'm not as burned out as I was before. It's easy for me to take a half day here, a half day there, and be because it's very easy for me to do that, the concept of taking off a block of time to completely shut down and relax for five, six, seven days seems completely unnecessary because I'm just not as exhausted as I was before. It was really important for me to take more time off this year and I did do that. So that is a thumbs up, successful. I was able to get more time off and I'm quite happy about that. And finally, my fifth goal that was a non-financial goal was to make a hundred videos on YouTube. That is a fail. I did not make a hundred videos. I made about 80 or so. I don't know exactly how I am going to do this year. I do know that I am going to be relatively busy for the first few months of the year, but I also know that starting in June, I am going to be smooth sailing because there's definitely a big project that I'm working on that's going to be fully wrapped up by mid to late May. So starting in June, I'm going to be really chill. I'm going to have a lot more free time. So I am looking forward to seeing how the channel progresses, what kind of content I put out there and what kind of people I reach but my goal of making a hundred videos throughout 2022 did not materialize. That is it for me for the 2022 recap. I hope you had a wonderful 2022 and I hope 2023 is even better. I always want to hear from you so let me know what you think about my goals, my recap, my performance. I failed three out of the 12 financial goals and then I failed two out of the five non-financial goals. How does that sound to you? Is that a good track record, a bad track record? Chime in in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. And if you are into doing challenges, whether on your own or as a team, feel free to hit me up and go check out that other video. Join me on the journey and I will see you in the next one. 
I would like to continue sharing my thoughts on all things money with you. So I would appreciate it if you could help out the channel by liking this video and sharing it with anyone you think might benefit from it. If you want to see more content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know when new videos come out. I'll see you in the next one.